What's going on everybody? My name is Brandon and I'm a senior in college and ROTC and I'm gonna help you crush the SIFT exam. So first off, let's talk about what the SIFT is. The SIFT is the Selective Instrument for Flight Training and essentially that's the Army's Aviation SAT or ACT to help you get into flight school and branch aviation as an officer or a warrant officer. So I took the SIF back in spring of 2021 and was able to pass. I studied for about two months, about an hour or two a day on just the aviation information portion because I wasn't too familiar with that part of the exam. And then on the last two weeks of the exam, about two or three times a week, I took a section exam because there are seven sections. And I did that all the way up until the test. And on the very last day, I just worked on information that I struggled to retain and took the exam and passed on my first go. All right, so let's talk about the different sections of the SIFT. So you got simple drawings, hidden figures, army aviation information, spatial apperception, reading, math skills, and lastly, mechanical comprehension. So that's seven sections total. All right, so I'm gonna give you a rundown of how I will explain um, each section. So I'm gonna show you what it might look like, like an example problem um, that you might see for that section on the exam. And I'm going to put how many questions you have to answer and how much time they're gonna give you for each section. So let's start with simple drawings. Simple drawings that are very simple. They're going to give you a set of five shapes. One of them is going to be different and you have to click on that different shape as fast as you can for all of them. So a good tip that I have is as soon as you click on the shape, move your mouse or your cursor on the middle shape, but don't click until you see the next set of problems so you can dart over to that um, shape and save time because trust me, moving your mouse from one end of the screen to the other, depending on your DPI, it can kill a lot of time. So you wanna save as much time as you can by just putting it in the center where you can access all of the different shapes relatively at the same speed. So let's talk about hidden figures. They're going to give you a box full of geometric shapes and they're gonna give you five different random geometric shapes that you have to find within that huge box full of them. And it's honestly the hardest part of the test, at least it was for me, I totally bombed it. And it's okay if you bomb it, because if you do better on another section, it's gonna help your overall composite score. So yeah, you have to do that pretty quick. You can practice that, but you can't really study for that. And that goes the same for simple drawings. It's just practice. It's just like a reaction kind of test. So let's talk about the Army Aviation Information section of the SIF. You can definitely study for this. Um, what I used was Quizlet, so I would get my study guide. I'll put a link in the description of the one that I used. And I grouped up different terms and I studied maybe five at a time. And I kept doing that until I studied all of the terms and I was able to memorize uh, most of it. So as long as you know the main controls of the aircraft, the main components of the aircraft, basic physics and how gravity, drag and the airfoil work, you're definitely gonna be fine on this exam. So let's move on to the next section, spatial apperception. I'll put an example of a problem that you might see for uh, spatial apperception. You can prepare a study for this because it's just pretty much just going to tell you how the aircraft is going to be oriented based on a picture that they give you. So they'll give you a first person view of what it might look like when you're looking at the cockpit if the air if the aircraft is tilted to the left or the right, they're going down or up, and they'll also give you one, what it looks like on the outside, so you can be able to tell if it's going left, right, up or down, and in what direction from the land to the sea. And for my exam, they actually used a, I believe, a jet. I know that on some study guides, they'll use helicopters, but on my test, they use a jet. And another thing about spatial app perception is if you study for it, and you generally get all of them correct, you will pretty much ace that section of the exam. But if you don't prepare for it, you can either get them all right or all wrong. The next section is the reading comprehension section. So you can definitely prepare for this the same way you would for another battery test like the SAT or the ACT or even the ASVAB. And you can even just prepare by just merely reading. So what I recommend is to go on Khan Academy and do like some practice problems for reading comprehension. I'm sure they have sections for that. That's what I, I used at least to prepare for this section of the exam. 
And another thing about um, reading comprehension is that most of the questions are going to be asking you what's the main idea of this passage. And a lot of the passages are going to be actually from army documents. Some of them might not be, but they're very, very dumbed down. You'd have to be dumber than a fifth grader to not be able to answer those questions. So the next section is the math skills test, and you can also definitely prepare yourself for this. If you're taking math courses prior to this exam, you should have no problem as long as you know all the way up to Algebra 2. So you can also use Quizlet for different math formulas to help you get familiar with how to solve certain problems, or you can go on Khan Academy and hash out a lot of the different practice problems that they have on there. A lot of them are going to be similar to the ones you'll see on the SAT, the ACT, or the ASVAB. So the last section of the SIFT is the mechanical comprehension section. So you're going to be doing things like basic physics, thermodynamics, mechanics, things of that sort. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's very, very basic stuff. So if you know the different classes of a lever, you'll be okay because it's gonna ask questions like that for sure. They're gonna ask you a lot of physics questions. You can find a bunch of practice problems online. With that being said, I'll put different links in the description below of the sites that I've actually used that had practice problems for each section of the SIFT that really, really, really helped me prepare and pass the SIFT. So now I'm gonna share with you five of my personal tips that are gonna help you prepare for and pass the SIFT. So my first tip is to obviously get a study book of some sort. I'll put a picture of what I got. Um, it was one of the cheaper ones on Amazon and I'll also put a link in the description below. Uh, my second tip is to make your own Quizlet. I'm serious about this, it's gonna help a lot to help you memorize this information for the aviation information section in particular. What you can also do is get together with a friend that you might have that's going to be also taking the SIF or just any friend in general just to help quiz you. And it's gonna help both of you guys if you guys quiz each other too because you're gonna be learning the information as well. So my third tip for you is to do a practice section two or three times a week for about two months before your exam. That's all you really need to pass the SIF. I'll put the links in the description below of what I used to help study for this. My fourth tip is to study a little bit, and I mean a little bit, all right, on information that you kind of struggle to retain the day before the exam because it's so important to get rest before your exam. So sleep early and you'll be able to think throughout the exam. So I'll share with you what I did. I didn't actually do that. I studied like crazy cramming things the night before and that only hindered my performance because I was so tired the next morning when I had to take the exam and I literally had brain farts left and right on the math section on the easiest questions just because I could not think because I was so tired. Trust me, you do not want to do that because I could have gotten a much higher score which it doesn't really matter to be honest as long as you pass on the SIFT but it's always better to get a higher score. My fifth tip for you is to eat a light and nutritious snack or meal before your exam because if you eat too much you're gonna feel tired and uncomfortable and you're just not gonna feel that great for the exam but if you eat something like maybe a, a peanut butter jelly sandwich or just a scoop of peanut butter right before your exam your brain's gonna get energized and you'll be able to focus and crush that exam all right so let's talk a little bit about my educational background I'm not the smartest kid on the block so if I could do it you definitely can do it I did take physics in high school but I didn't do too well and it's been about three years since I've actually taken a an actual math course in college. Uh, it was back in freshman year. I did all my general education courses then. So I had to do a lot of self-study to relearn everything. Um, it only goes up to Algebra 2 for the math portion. And for reading, you're just going to be reading a bunch of different documents. A lot of them are army documents and they're very, very simple. It's just what's the main idea of this passage, easier than an SAT or an ASVAB. I also took the SAT back in high school five times. I scored a 1280, that's a super score too. It's not the greatest score in the world, believe me. So if I could do it, you definitely can do it too. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got for preparing and practicing for the SIFT. I'm sure all of you guys are gonna ace it just like I did and um, branch aviation if you're going the ROTC route, West Point or um, through walks. So if you have any other questions about this exam, please feel free to contact me. I'll put my information in the description below. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Goodbye.